Hi there, Coach Shane Wah, Head Coach of Icy Facts Coaching. So let me ask you, do you ever feel any discomfort or slight pain or nagging, you know, aches on, uh, on your inner thigh or let's say groin area during your cycling or running? What do you do? Do you just rest because your coach says so or is that the, you know, the immediate response to it? Rest, which is good. But then what can you do so you can make sure that it won't happen again? instead of like putting a band-aid, resting, and that's it. Because the thing is that if you don't know what's going on and you don't do any proactive prevention, you know, most likely you're gonna have to experience that on your next training or a harder training. So my suggestion is actually take a look at it because if you're experiencing that during training, believe me, you're gonna ha it's, that, it's gonna happen during race day. So I'm sharing you here what you can do right now if you're experiencing that problem. Watch this. Okay. Um, so there's a couple of athletes who actually had problem or some discomfort on their inner thigh. One of the athletes is it happened during a ride, during a healy ride, and the other athlete also during a healy run. Here is the groin strain or groin pool. We call it also a doctor strain. So it refers to the overstretching, tearing, or rupturing of any of the five adductor muscles of the inner thigh. Okay. So basically the primary function to move the legs toward one another or to cross one over the other. So it helps stabilize hip during walking and running. So five muscles that we want to check out is the pectineus, adductor longus, adductor brevis, adductor magnus, or gracilis. So I put, I added here. So I added here the image. You don't really need to know the scientific or the medical terminology, which a lot of people just say inner thigh, or you know they point out where it's they feel something, uh, or usually uh, people call it as groin uh, issues. But what we want to make sure that you know the symptoms is uh, the pain is worse when you bring your legs together. Pain is worse when you do any sort of activity that requires raising of the knee. Or like, for example, one of the athletes said uh, when she climbs the stairs or uh, when you run. Yeah. You can also experience a snapping or popping feeling during the injury, followed by intense pain. A lot of the athletes that I do have, uh, like you guys in Faxi Fox coaching, as I mentioned to you, like if there's any discomfort, even though you don't know what it is, but you feel like something's not right, like I need to know. So these two athletes, they're, they're, they know what my expectations are. I need fast communication and, um, and then make sure that we actually address them. So I'm gonna tell you of what we need to do right now. Stretching is good, but you gotta make sure that you are warmed up. You don't just stretch. Also, you don't wanna overdo it in a way that if you know that you're tight, you, you know, flexibility of each individual varies. So you wanna make sure that you go at your own pace, okay? And if you're not sure of how to even do it, and I'm here, you can just message me and I'll even demonstrate it to you. Okay. Follow rice procedure. What is it? Uh, rest, ice, about 10 minutes every two hours for at least three days. These are, you know, something that's actually injured. Those two athletes, I don't believe that it's injury. It's more of something that we need to rest, definitely. But the sooner that we actually address it, the better. Okay. Compress, uh, elevate. Seek medical attention if this is something that, you know, it's recurring. Uh, something that you've experienced in the past, you know, check with your previous physical therapist or doctor because that is much better instead of being sorry. If you know you're limping, it's also, you know, to reduce the impact. So if you're like, for example, you cannot even do regular activities such as walking, definitely I suggest you go to the doctor. Or you can, if you want, you can try to observe it. But the sooner that you get attention or help, the better. So if you're limping, use crutches to take weight off your strain until you can walk pain-free without limping. So let's say you go to work, right? Don't worry about people looking at you. Oh, what happened to you? Why are you wearing crutches? Oh, that's what you get from running. <laughs> Don't worry about them. Worry about yourself. Pay attention to yourself. And if you got to take crutches with you, take it, especially because it's going to take off impact. Okay. Like, for example, when I was training for uh, 10 Ironman in 10 days, uh, that was back back then, you know, like I did something with my foot and um, I basically pinched the nerve. I did not know. I had no idea of what's going on. 
But what I did, I just didn't want to sacrifice my race and I want longevity in training and racing. I just basically use crutches and, you know, use the ice like almost, almost the entire day. And even when I was sleeping, I, all, all, I also have the ice. And when I got off from bed, I actually forgot that I was, I couldn't walk the, the day before. So, but it, when you're like, when you're feeling like something's not right, do everything that you can. So as you can actually reduce the time that you're out from training. Okay, so use scratches, uh, gentle, gentle stretches of your quadriceps, adductors, soleus, hamstrings, gastrocnemius or uh, calves and gluteal um, muscles. Okay, so next one, these are some exercises for the inner thighs, adductor stretch again, a lot of uh, a lot of athletes, especially if you don't do this one, do more of a modification. Don't force yourself uh, to actually do this motion. So sit on the floor and take a firm hold of the tops of your feet. Bring your legs in close to your body, pressing the soles of your feet together. Push your knees gently. Okay. So this part right here, you can gradually push it, but you know before you even do that, a lot of times you can't even have those feet close to you. So don't go as close to you if you cannot do it yet. But if you can, then, you know, when your feet are actually very close to you, then you can start actually having, you know, put, putting a pressure on your, uh, on your knees, okay? Okay, another adductor stretch, uh, stretching your adductor or groin mus muscle is key to maintaining hip flexibility for many sports. You want to maintain hip flexibility because that's what you actually have to use, especially in running. Okay, uh, keep your body upright and put your hands on your hips. Uh, bend your right leg so that your left leg is extended. This one is right, <laughs> the other way around. Okay, so rock gently to the side. So you will feel a lot of stretch on the, in this area. Again, you you don't need to be as low as this lady here. Go as low as you can. Take your time. And you know, I'm gonna go back again. You don't do this when you're not warmed up yet, okay? When you need to warm up, other things that you can warm up is you can do the jumping jack, but sometimes you can you should not actually do some hopping or jumping. So be careful also of that. Or I sometimes I do um, a mountain climber, okay? But if you have like your wrists are not really uh, strong or you know, it's so hard for you to actually uh, be on the ground. That's also something that you need to consider. Even just a brisk walk, but more of a fast walk would be already a warm up. Just want to make sure that, you know, if you ever do this one, uh, I suggest that you warm up. And actually the stretches, uh, based on my experience, it's much better that you dig into your muscles first and then stretch. Okay, so you actually loosen the nut first. Or this one is pigeon pose, but Definitely not a lot of people can do this one. You got to be really flexible. You don't have to do that, especially, you know, if you have some weight in the front or like your back, you know, there's a lot of different things going on here. You got to be flexible. So there's some modification that you can do. Okay. Sometimes even just having this legs is not doable. So you can even just, you know, just really baby steps, have your uh, one leg straight forward and uh, straight up at the front. And then just slowly and gradual, don't push it, okay? My suggestion, if you, this is not so comfortable with you, you're already good just by doing this kind, okay? Some simple ones or just even just that. When you feel that stretch or around that area, that's good. By the way, another way to actually dig into your muscles on your groin area is like, for example, Brian's using the, you know, those vibrating massager. So that would help to actually just loosen up and uh, reduce the knot where that is. So this one is another modification, okay? Hip, front leg supported, knee to hip. If you, you are one of those uh, athletes who actually have get inflamed, uh, you know, knees just by doing this position, make sure that to have some cushion right here. Okay, hip square and back toes turned down. Another modification is by using this strap, okay? Okay. Other, other ways is actually for you to hold your leg while lying on your back, raise up your leg and hold the back of your knee. Pull the leg upwards until a stretch is felt. Okay. I have another athlete who does this one. This one actually helps her a lot. It makes a big difference actually, especially when you're running and uh, you feel less of the pain and you know, like running should be no pain, right? But you can only achieve that if you partner up your hard workout with such 
things like what I'm trying to suggest to you guys. Another one that's also good, uh, this one is good. This is a straightforward exercise. It activates your glutes and hip flexors uh, while also improving overall stability in your pelvis and abdominals, okay? Uh, when and if, I, if I'm giving you training picks exercises, notice that I do give you like only five to 10 minutes pre uh, pre-run exercise such as this or glute activation, please do not underestimate it because that actually we want that so you can activate your glutes right before your uh, run and it does help because you want to include uh, you know your glutes being activated during running as well as your core. So this one is good. As you progress, place a band around your knee to increase resistance. Remember this band has different uh, resistance. So well, if you think that you're actually not as flexible, even this guy here, don't even put the, res <laughs> the resistance band there. You may just start with the movement, you know, to where in you're actually getting the, uh, your glutes activated. And then from there, when you feel that, you know, your, your movement, your range of motion is much better, then you can add resistance band. When you go like Amazon or like buy your resistance band, or when you go to physical therapy, uh, there are different resistance. Usually they're color coded. So make sure you buy the right one for you. Make sure you keep your neck straight, keep your hips forward and aligned, okay? So you don't wanna be like overextending your back. You want your back just uh, neutral, okay? Your focus here is more of your glutes, okay? And your pelvis and your core. Okay. Another one, so let's say, so first of all, you wanna, all these ones are more of stretches, getting your uh, glutes activated. This one is another one where in uh, low intensity isometric adductor squeezes. You can use such ball like this, it can be, I mean, there's those uh, stability balls or medicine balls. Uh, make sure that, you know, it's something that you can actually hold something like this. So there are different ways. Um, you can use actually this exercise for some people who actually have SI joint inflammation, strong spelling, uh, for which regaining adductor strength is essential. Okay, so uh, lie on your back with your pelvis in a neutral position. Remember, neutral, so don't overextend your back. Your knees bent at the right angle and your feet flat on the ground. So now you, while, while in this position, you want to squeeze as hard as is comfortable to hold for 10 seconds. So what you're doing here, you're actually, uh, uh, you're doing some isometric adductor squeezes, okay? So you repeat the movement. When you do this, you should not experience any pain, but if you do, uh, my suggestion is to actually reduce the intensity or just stop and let me know or your uh, physical therapist or doctor, okay? Another way is also you uh, put the ball between, uh, between your ankles and then hold it as hard now you'll feel your adductor also engages, okay? Again, this movement should not be causing you any pain. It's more of strengthening, getting the adductor uh, strength there. Okay. Another way is also, you know, uh, lifting your leg like this. So still lie on your back with your pelvis in a neutral position, okay? Place a medicine ball between your knee. This one, um, squeeze as hard as is comfortable, hold for 10 seconds. Uh, maintain a strong back and engage your core. Okay. Other ways to actually uh, deal with such uh, issue. So uh, one of the ways besides the stretches and you know mobility exercises, uh, using a vibrating mas ma vibrating massager, you can also do a self massage. Uh, in most cases, a trigger point in the adductor longus are the most common cause of groin pain. So a doctor longus is right here in this area. Okay. Locate your adductor longus muscle while you're lying on your side while with your leg bent and lying on its side. Can you see this one? So this one right here is the adductor longus and this one is the adductor magnus right here. Okay, so you wanna lay down there. When you raise your, your knee, you would feel your adductor longus actually is going to activate. You're going to meet. Uh, you're going to feel something that's moving. So that's your adductor longus. Okay. So now, when you feel that, you grasp your adductor longus between fingers and thumb. So that's the upper side. That would be the adductor longus, and also check out your adductor adductor magnus. So that's the lower side. 
you can massage with supported fingers or supported knuckles. Okay. If you don't know, I suggest that actually, uh, I suggest that you contact your physical therapist or your massage therapist, professional massage therapist. Um, these are, this area is actually something that's usually um, not being paid attention, I guess, because of the area. It's kind of like more private. So, but it, it really helps a lot, especially if you know that you're tight there, you need to make sure that that's being paid attention. Okay, so it's not just the IT bed, it's not just the knee area or like the glute area. This one needs massage too, okay? Um, so you could do this or, you know, my suggestion, you know, what works for me, I mean, I do it myself, but sometimes my hands are not really strong. As you can see here, uh, he's using uh, his knuckles also, so just to more pressure. You could use like lacrosse ball, but, you know, it, again, it, it requires more pressure. The, the one that I do recommend is the vibrating mass massager. So for me, it helps because there's more leverage in putting more pressure. Okay. Now that you know how to solve this problem of pain or discomfort in your inner thigh or groin area, if you like this one, I would like to invite you to actually join my live call for free, wherein I'm actually going to take you further and I'm going to share you five secrets to successful training and racing. Because the thing is that what you did of actually solving this, this one is after the fact that you actually experienced the problem already. Now, I know you're very busy, right? And then you still want to train. I know you want to execute the training, but then I want you to know and to learn what are the proactive, proactive step-by-step -step things that you need to address so you wouldn't need to actually experience that injury or some pain or disappointments. So on that live call, I'm gonna share you five secrets to successful training and racing. Sign up here.